Roy from Sunland reckons he builds the best caravans in Australia. So we had to go and have a look for ourselves and while we're up there watching how he builds them, we were so taken back we had to grab a mobile phone and just start filming it. Excuse the raw, uncut, noisy nature of this footage, but I think you'll be very interested to see how Sunland build these caravans. It all starts at the chassis. We've got here, this is a sub-assembly. Now the sub-assembly is made of steel. We build this and then we send it outside and we get it hot dip galvanised as, as you see it right now. We also go the same with the A-frame. It's steel and then we get it hot dip galvanised. Once we've done that, we then go to the aluminium parts and we assemble the whole chassis together. Now this takes forever to build. If you have a look at these chassis rails here, and they're a super strong chassis wheel. We actually put, um, these are lots of that go inside here. And if you have a look down this other end, these have got um, crush points, so that when we tension this up, this part can't crush together. The amount of work that goes into this is absolutely phenomenal. But the benefit is, we end up with a chassis about 150 kilograms lighter, and nearly twice the strength of a traditional standard um, steel uh, chassis. Look, and that is incredibly important. I'll tell you why it's so incredibly important. All the weight that we save here in what we're doing comes back to you by way of payload. So at 150 um, kilos lighter, that's another 150 kilos worth of water that you could carry just to bring you up to a standard position. So it's a pretty big deal. I think I get a little frustrated when I hear that people are spending similar amounts of money or even more money to buy other brands of caravans that don't have this sort of technology involved. Give you some idea, this aluminium chassis, it's going to cost me about $10,000 to produce. I can get an ordinary steel chassis together for maybe three or $4,000. That's a huge difference. The biggest thing, however, is that we've got to do all this in-house. So we've had to design this ourselves, we've had to engineer this ourselves, and then we've had to build every single solitary part of it internally. Now, to do that, we've got a uh, CNC machine down the end, which gives us the ability to produce these sorts of components over here. Now, this is all built on the CNC machine, every single part of it. And then the guys come along, in this case, Bob, he's gonna weld all that together and that's a part of that chassis. To put this together on the chassis, this has to be bolted on and then we use a special adhesive that goes between the two surfaces to stop oxidization between the aluminium and the steel. This chassis is gonna be around long after you and I have forgotten. Bob's got another example here. They're not just placed there, they're welded into place. Again, that's a lot of work. This is where the value in our product's coming from. It's work like that, that's going to make this last forever, make this super strong, super light. That's where your dollars are going. Then what we do over here, the aluminium frames all built in these jigs over here. Now it's a box section um, aluminium welded frame. You'll be able to see if I can show you just here. In typical fashion, these guys are jumping ahead of us and going way too fast. But here, they've just finished the wall, put it down, put the first interior ply on there. This is all laid down, pressured. Once this is um, set and solid, that wall is as solid as. We will then flip that over and that goes to the other side for, for production. This is a solid glue, so there is no movement between the ply and the aluminium. Now you hear a lot of people talking about aluminium um, cracking, if you weld it. If you look very closely here, you can see what appears to be fractures. The reality is that that's welded down this edge here. This here, this part here isn't necessary. So to make it flat for the ply to fit on it, we grind that off. And what you're seeing is unnecessary weld that's left over. It's of no structural value whatsoever. Again, it's gonna last a lifetime. If we were to use clips on that, or we were to rivet it or screw it together, you won't get the same sort of strength out of that. This doesn't matter whether the weight's coming from this angle, from that angle, from that angle, it's always going to stay in one solid piece. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Those walls, however, um, and I'll show you a little later when we go to the other side, we use different size aluminium for different parts of the structure. 
So we're using 25 by 25, and we also use a 50 by 25. And in some cases, we can go as far as 75, or even two lots of 50 when we're producing those parts. So looking over here, you can see more of the sorts of things that we're cutting out on the CNC machine, which I'll show you shortly. This is a rear panel, and you can see over on the wall over here, they're all parts of our rear bumper bar. Now our rear bumper bar is a uh, welded aluminium tube, and they're all the plates that we fit, all cut on that CNC, light fittings. Um, it's a multi-purpose bar, so we can use it for um, carrying hoses, leads, whatever we want. Also, do our light fittings, but the glory of the bar is it's super, super light, but very, very useful. So on this one here, you can see the parts we've used then become assembled, and then they become painted. And here's an example of the rear bar that we've used. Now, we build every part of this. So these are aluminium tubes. The only part on this that we haven't built is these plastic end caps here for the screw threads. All this bracketry are built by us. This is all built by us. This is all put together. Again, very, very light, very effective. And we use this to swing down, which you'll see on the uh, vans later, how this actually swings away, enabling us to use the back section, which has previously been wasted area, to put all the clutter, you know, the, the plumbing, the electronics, all that sort of stuff, well out of the way so we don't need to worry about it. Unlike most caravan manufacturers where what they do, they buy a chassis, they buy the componentries, um, they may even buy the furniture, they certainly buy the soft furnishings in some cases, they may even get electricians from outside to come in, plumbers to come in from outside, and all they do is all the assembly. We do a lot more than that. We're manufacturing, but we're also designing, we're testing, we're uh, product producing, and we do the whole lot as a very unique thing. It gives us a totally different perspective on caravan manufacturing. You'll see that again when you have a look at how we ensure that the balance of the caravan's right. We keep everything centered so that you know we haven't got too much ball weight or not enough ball weight. These things are very expensive to come up with, but the end result is just bloody awesome, let's face it. Let's have a look at the CNC machine. Now, the CNC machine that we've, we've bought, which was a massive investment for, for Sunland, gives us the ability to cut out timber, and this is some timber here that's been cut out pre-assembly. It gives us the ability to cut out the aluminium, as you saw, these aluminium panels. We can also um, do special things like um, cutting acrylics. We can cut stainless steel. We can um, pretty much produce anything. And then we are gonna treat that either in the paint booth by spraying it, and we'll have a peek look in here. And if you have a look at the other sorts of things that we design, Again, another thing produced on the CNC machine. Just over here, you'll see this panel. Now that panel's been cut on the CNC machine, aluminium. You'll see all the fold lines. That's actually a timber carrying uh, box that goes in the A-frame of the van. And you see all these other little components. All done, designed, built, manufactured here. You cannot buy stuff like this off the shelf. So if we're going to have it work properly for us, we've really had to do the whole bit ourselves. Here you can see these little cutouts. Now, what they are is where we've got a hole through the floor of our caravan for a hose to go through or a cable or whatever. When you drill a hole and you put a cable in, you fill it full of silicon, if that moves before the silicon sets, you'll end up with holes dust will get in, water ingress, whatever. These have been designed, so what we do is we slip this on the hose first, put the silicon in, and then screw this over the top of it. It stops that from happening, so we're guaranteeing that we've got a truly completely sealed hole once that pipe's been, or that um, uh, wire's been put into place. We weren't necessarily the very first uh, in the caravan industry to have this, although I'm not aware of anyone that had one before us, but one I am absolutely certain of is we're the only caravan manufacturer that uses it for the applications that we use, where we're building everything on the machine from whether it be furniture right down to the chassis, and that truly is something unique to Sunland. This was another thing that when we put the spray booth in, it's opened up all kinds of possibilities. So as you can see, we're, we're painting um, furniture, we can paint aluminium, in fact, here you've got a galley with its first undercoat that you can see inside there. And we're able to do anything, again, paint 
whatever with all types of materials. Mostly we're using two pack on our furniture because it's the strongest. Um, it was once described to me as putting like a diamond coating on your furniture, which is a, which is a pretty big deal. Glenn, I know I keep harping on my chassis, but I have to tell you, it is probably one of the most exciting things. It actually took nearly 10 years to come up with this design. We had a look at a variety of different ways of building aluminium chassis previously. We really couldn't see a design that would be able to do the things that we wanted to do. It had to be strong, it had to be light, it had to have flex built into it. If there is no flex in the chassis, you've got, everything's going to go through the, the caravan itself. So that was very important. Right. So to get this design to work, and I have to tell you, I believe we are totally unique. Well, we are definitely to totally unique with this particular design, but I don't know of another manufacturer anywhere in the world that has a design that even comes remotely close to this. Mm. We have been pioneers with so much of what we do for the last 13 years, it's not funny. Mm. And the, the chassis is just, I guess, a pinnacle of those design features mm -hmm. that are totally unique to us. Mm -hmm. We wanted a caravan chassis that was stronger than what was out there, mm -hmm. but the big thing is to get this payload. People just don't seem to understand. In today's world, they're wanting more and more in their caravans. They want to carry more. They want to mm -hmm. carry more water. They want bigger fridges. Heck, we've got them now with, they want two air conditioners, um, dishwashers. You wouldn't believe the thing that things that they want to put in. These things are possible but only possible if you get this type of structure in place where we've removed the weight where it's not necessary, mm -hmm. increased the strength, mm -hmm. giving people more payload. Every kilo that I save in here is an extra kilo you can carry, an extra litre of water, extra food, extra mm -hmm. clothes, all those things you want. Mm -hmm. And 150 kilos is an awful lot of carrying capacity. But the big thing is that using the materials that we've done, not only have we increased the ability for you to carry that way, we've actually increased the strength of the chassis mm. as well. Mm -hmm. So, government standards suggest that a off-road chassis should have, should have a safety factor of five. Now, very few actually get to the, a safety Explain factor that. of five. It's not that it's a government requirement, it's a government suggestion. So basically that means whatever its rating is, it should be able to carry five times that amount. So if it's a two ton chassis, it should be able to carry 10 tons. Mm -hmm. That's an awful lot of excess. But when you're going off road and you're banging around and so forth, you really do need that strength. Ours comes closer to seven standard mm -hmm. with 150 kilo weight saving mm -hmm. at three and a half ton. Mm -hmm. Now the chassis itself can actually be rated up to four and a half ton. We rate it at three and a half with a safety factor, say close on seven, which is just incredibly strong. So we've got this incredible strength and an extra 150 kilos worth of payload that mm. you can use mm. to carry your, your stuff. We've also gone a step more now since this design and we've now created our aluminium drawbar as well. Now the aluminium drawbar isn't standard, it's a, an available option. If you try and do a one piece aluminium, it's got no flex, sooner or later something's going to give. Here you've got Noel who's having a chat with Pam about the colour selection and things that's happening for her caravan. So not only are we doing upholstery, um, the leather, the fabrics and so forth, but Noel will actually produce things like cushions and you can colour coordinate, that sort of stuff. In fact, Noel produces lots of other things that are quite unique to us, from awning arm covers, these are a vinyl cover that goes over the awning arms to protect them, to stop stones from hitting them, um, gas bottle covers, um, we do things like a cover for the TV so that when you're in transit you pop the, uh, the TV into the cover and you put it away so that it doesn't get damaged. Um, Noel will also produce things like the cover for your um, microwave plate. So you can leave the plate inside the microwave oven. You simply put it in a nice padded cushion. So there's lots of things that we do that are simply not done anywhere else. Again, exclusive, unique to Sunland, but just makes us a little bit different from the average company. This is one part that we really do like though, is being able to have first hand interaction with the customers, find out exactly what it is that they want and how they want it, with lots of options and then guidance to make sure that they come up with the right selections at the end of the day rather than just saying hey you choose and then when it goes wrong, sorry guys, you know, too bad so sad. We really make sure by guiding correctly they end up with exactly what they want.
Okay, so to make sure that um, this really is a good experience for the customer, the colour selection, Noel will also bring up and show them samples of the laminates that they might use. We've got things like the actual panels, the leather, the cupboard doors, all these different colours so that you can match this with that. Again, to make sure that there are no clashes and it works just to perfection. Sunland offer probably more colour options and choices than most other manufacturers because we can put it all together, we have it all here available and people can come and talk to an expert that understands that, not a salesperson in someone's yard somewhere that doesn't really get it. So the other sorts of things that we can do, here's a fibreglass panel, this is a vanity unit that we've produced and we are doing more and more of this type of work. We're working on, again, stronger material, uh, it has to be lighter, um, it has to have flexibility, so these we can produce in a whole heap of different colours. At the moment they are an option on the products that we do, so it, it, this enhances your choices. We've got some fantastic products coming out in the fibreglass. We make all this again ourselves, we produce all the plugs, we do use an outside company to actually do the glassing part of it for us, um, but all the designings all comes, it's all unique, it's all Sunland. This is who we are. We're not just another caravan manufacturer. Now when it comes to our furniture, we've got lots of options. So here you can see a traditional timber frame. This frame will then have ply attached to it, be routed out, and this is what most caravan manufacturers will use to produce it. And in some ways, this is a very good product. It's still quite light, um, very flexible, easy to produce, but has a lot of limitations on what you can do to it. So. Nowadays we offer a lot of other types of products. These products include the type of product that's more of a solid board. Now this type of board here, which we can cut on the CNC machine, we can use a variety of different surfaces. We can use coloured laminates on it, we can do all sorts of stuff. We can cut it out to various different shapes and as you can see as a solid board makes it easier to screw into, cut holes into, whatever. A little bit heavier than th this type of product very strong and just that little bit more flexible in some ways. So this is a product that we're very very keen on. This is called Stylite and as you can see it's a beautiful finish, nice finish there, super lightweight. That lightweight again comes back to this weight saving, mm -hmm. increased payload. Mm -hmm. It's also again very strong, much stronger than having a thin ply mm -hmm. over a timber frame. It's a beautiful material this is the sort of stuff that we're doing now. This is where we're heading into the future, I think, with a lot of our type of products. Um, all based on that increased strength, mm. decreased weight, mm -hmm. increased payload. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the way to go. Boards that can be painted. So we use some of these sort of boards, which is um, like a craft wood. Very good for... Um, very good for painting, so when we go across to the spray booth we can really make that look absolutely superb in two-pack paint. This is a edge banding machine where we can use different edge, um, put different edges on the materials, mm -hmm. we can use different colours, all sorts of things. Actually quite a handy piece of equipment. When it comes to structural strength, you've got the strength that's required in the chassis and we have to have strength in the frame. We also have to have strength in the walls here. Now, using a combination of the right walls and the right frame, you'll notice that I have radius top doors. And one thing you'll find, you won't find a sunland that's got a crack or a join above the door. That's because the structural strength in a weak area on my vents is actually a strength, a strength area where we'll put a 75 or a 50 structural supports, additional supports in all these weakened areas. When we look at the frame later, I'll show you what that looks like from the inside. But from the outside, this type of cladding, this type of arrangement is absolutely phenomenal. I've seen people advertise and showing off and saying how strong their caravans are. But I've got to tell you, I would dare them to actually come up and compare the strength of their van with the strength of my van. I, I, it's an open challenge to anyone that would want to come and try that. The other open challenge is I keep hearing that manufacturers are stating their vans are super light. Now, if you take my van, take the equipment level that's supplied with it, and take a comparable size van with a similar type of equipment level, I will guarantee right now my van is considerably lighter than that opposition van. 
The only way a van can weigh less than my van is if it's got less in it to start off with. This spec level, with this level of equipment, see, we do put a high spec level because we've got that weight saving in the first place, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The other thing about this that's critical, you'll notice all my weight is designed to go over the wheels, yep. right? Yep. The balance on this van is superb. I actually endorse not using weight distribution hitches on my caravans. We'll get the van nice and level to start off with. It should tow superbly. In fact, when we deliver our vans, we drive them with the customer in their car before we let them off the premises, mm. where we'll check the brake mm. system, we'll check the towability, we make sure that that van tows like a dream before we let them leave. That's another part that's unique about the Sunland experience. The reason that we do it like that is quite simple. We get our customers coming back after taking the delivery of their caravans, swearing that these are the best caravans they've ever towed. In fact, someone you and I know quite well loves to tow a Sunland Patriot for that very reason, because they, they do tow superbly. I've had, well, one particular guy come back to me. Um, he was a tough nut. He's lived out bush and, you know, he's been there, been around the block a few times. And he rang me just after taking delivery and with this grumpy voice on the phone says to me, I just want to say something about the way your caravan tows. And I thought, oh my God, what's this guy going to say to me? He said that he'd been towing um, vans and all sorts of stuff for the last 30 years. He has never, ever towed anything that tows as well as the Sunland Patriot. Mm. Now that's a fairly big reward for me mm -hmm. to, to put in the efforts that we're doing to know that it's appreciated by the end user at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I've had a number of people that have actually said to me they weren't sure about the front of my caravan, this, this front section here. I have to tell you, it's very, very dear to me, a very good friend of mine, uh, Chris Conroy, who unfortunately passed not that long ago. Chris was very well known in Australia for uh, Chris Conroy's world of boating, Chris Conroy's aviation. So in his later years, he was very much into this aviation thing. And I'd asked Chris whether or not he could help me get better aerodynamics out of my van without becoming too radical. Mm -hmm. And actually, this was one of the very last things that Chris ever produced. Mm -hmm. Now, whilst it may uh, at first look a little like a big blunt um, flat piece on the front of the van. Actually, it's been designed very carefully by Chris to actually channel the airflow from the vehicle coming up and over the, uh, over the top of the caravan to reduce wind drag uh, and wind resistance. And I actually think it's, uh, it looks superb. So, you know, this is one of last, Chris's last legacies, so to speak, and I actually love it. And now, of course, my van looks different to everybody mm. else's van, but that's a, that's a byproduct. A couple of other points here. This is another one of um, my exclusive uh, designs, and that's at our front toolbox. Now, it's not just a toolbox. Um, oils ain't oils. What we've got here is the ability to carry jerry cans, and you can see all the um, delivery equipment. Every caravan that goes out comes with starter kit, hoses, leads, cables, connections. Um, in fact, we even supply, instead of a uh, wheel brace, we supply a tension wrench. Now, a, a torque wrench is designed so that you do the torque, you do your wheel nuts up at the right tension, but because we've got a lot, a lot of bolts on here, if you ever need to retension um, suspensions or whatever, you've got the right tool for the job from day one. Can't expect people to do it and then not give them the tools to do it. That's the byproduct. Okay, we've got the gas bottles in here, and we've got a slide out generator tray on the other side. And you'll see in the centre here, we've cut holes between these dividers, given us the ability to carry poles or anything long that we want to put in the front of this toolbox. The toolbox is designed so that when it comes up, it comes up at the right angle, so it doesn't protrude too fast here, too past this point here, which gives us then the ability to put something like an electric leg, um, bicycle carriers, boat loaders, all that sort of stuff can actually go on the front and not be affected by this. And of course, you can notice that it's also being done in the Raptor Coat. Now that Raptor Coat is absolutely fabulous stuff. We've turned the material inside out and put the checker plate on the inside so that we've got a smooth side for this mm -hmm. coating because we've got a smooth surface on the van and we want to keep that line looking nice. But it gives us a, very be a much better surface to spray than having all the nooks and crannies that a checker plate would, mm -hmm. uh, would produce. A couple of other points on the A-frame that are unique to Sunland. Um, first off, our trailer wiring. We put a 12-pin a plug here, and then we supply the owner with a cable that connects into here to their car. 
when they're finished they can pull that cable off which means your cable's not sitting out in the weather mm. it also makes it a lot harder for someone to come along and take your caravan mm -hmm. because they can't connect it up to their car unless they happen to have the right cables there do 35 hitch is standard on my vans here we've got a double uh, wheel brace bracket so you'll find some of them will put the singles on or put two singles and you have two of these awkward handles getting in the way pain in the backside you really don't want that you want just the one handle a decent ratchet handbrake I've harped on this for years we were one of the first to put this type of handbrake on a caravan um, it's a it's a unit another unit from vehicle components but a proper ratchet it's not one of those silly ones that sit up here that just simply can't do the job and then we try and tuck things into the A-frame so that they're not going to affect the operation so for example this little connection here that's for the rear camera mm. it's tucked inside the A-frame so it's protected okay yep. out of the way done in such a way that water can't drain inside of it this particular one has also got an anti-sway control now while I'll tell you now my vans don't tend to sway because they're set up right we'll hook them up right with our customers we've made sure the payload goes onto it correctly we the vans tow superbly however we still have some people particularly those that are new to uh, caravanning that are concerned about the possibilities of sway this one's got a control uh, sway control on it to make sure that simply cannot happen and all you need to do is look down that little globe there when this is connected up this glows green and you know that you're safe to tow this and know whether crosswinds, trucks, doesn't matter what it is, this will always tow superbly. We're at the moment, we actually have one of the very first caravans we built. This particular long reach was built back in 2004. From the day we started building caravans, and we've never changed, we've always been innovators. So this particular van here, for example, we were one of the very first manufacturers, if not the first, to start fitting LED lights on the outside. Now, Again, just innovation, innovation, innovation. We were doing that before anyone else were doing. We were doing things uh, with the electronics before other people were starting to look at electronics. In fact, I had um, the vast pleasure, if you like, of fitting one of the very first lithium battery systems into a caravan over 10 years ago and we use the C-Bus technology to activate all the lights and all that sort of st uh, stuff inside the van. Those things now have become more readily available. That first battery, 360 amp hours of lithium battery, cost us $8,000. So our experience with lithium goes back over 10 years in the solar uh, part of it. In fact, we have a new system coming out. Can't tell you too much about it right now, uh, but watch out, watch, watch this space for SIP. Sunland in Telepower, where we've taken all this knowledge that we've gained and we're now going to produce our own system, uh, due to be released a little later on this year. So looking inside this, I say this is a 2004. If you look at the condition of this caravan, and it's not a one-off, this is the way we normally see them, they look really still fantastic because of the materials that have been used. We use high quality materials. We've never been the cheapest caravan in the market, we'll never be the cheapest caravan in the market, but by damn it, we are the best caravan in the market, and I don't think there's anyone that really, if they do the homework, check it out, you won't find anything that's built better than these. Here's a, again an early sunland, and you can see with the aluminium cladding, even back in those days, we weren't putting the joints above the doors. They put those joints above there because they know it's a weak area, they know it's going to move, they know it's going to crack if they don't, so they make allowances for it. Now I'm all for making allowances and making sure that things can move and flex when they need to, but when you're in an area like this, actually it's not that hard to strengthen it up. We use a radius top door and we put a lot of structural strength in that. You know, I keep talking about innovations. We, we clearly have been innovators since day one. You know, we've done a lot of things that we've talked about here. Even with the chassis, our, our new chassis is super innovated, but we go back to innovating the chassis right from the beginning of our existence, where I was being told by everyone, you don't need shock absorbers on a caravan. We refused to believe that. We said, no, I need to put shockers on caravans. So we started putting shockers on caravans. I've been using vehicle components um, reasonably exclusively. We've tried some others along the way, but 
I've stuck pretty much with VC along the way, mm -hmm. and VC has worked with me. That's why we ended up coming up with the, the dual shock absorber system. Now that actually happened here at Sunland, and if you look around now, there's so many other mm -hmm. companies using this dual shocker system, almost as if, well, this is the way it's always been. Mm -hmm. Well, it isn't the way it always was. In fact, before we did it, it wasn't being done at all. Now going back to our walls which we were talking about before and the fact that they are an, a welded aluminium so here you can see the wall actually standing up ready to rock and roll they're starting to fit the furniture into it if you have a look you'll see that these are actually a 25 by 25 box we've taken a lot of the excess uh, aluminium away with these holes but you'll notice here that this is actually uh, a hard glue that attaches the uh, ply wall to the aluminium where we have uh, structural stresses and strains, we go from that 25 to something like, in this case, a 50 by 25 that runs along the bottom rail and over the wheel arch. Now, if you have a look at um, a lot of timber frame caravans, you'll find that they are made up of pieces quite often just stapled together to create the shape. It's not one piece and welded up or, or, or mounted up the way this is. This is where the table's located. Now, because the table has everything we do, we have the ability to retrofit, upgrade and changes. So once this caravan's been built, if the owner wants to later put in, say, a bed seat conversion, all the structure's in the wall ready for them to be able to do it. So it's been made strong enough to not only cope with what it's designed to do initially, but also designed to be able to cope with whatever um, the owners may want to do later down the track. And hence we've got these big bars in here. Okay. Now, when it comes to the roof, you'll see there's a 50 mil, a 25 rail across the top there. When the roof goes on, it produces another 25 rail, so the roof will also end up with a 50 mil rail all across the top. Look, a lot of people over the years have asked me, why did we go to aluminium? We did start off with timber frames, like everybody else. My first bad experience where we actually had a customer, an accident, they had a piece of timber spear through the roof of their caravan. It was in storage in their yard. They didn't know. He's come to his caravan six months later and discovered that the water has been pouring in the back and the whole back of the van where the timber was had all completely rotted away. And I've got to tell you, it was one of the downers in my, my life. There's a lovely man, a beautiful van, and it was completely destroyed by one almost stick of timber that had come off a tree and pierced through the roof. I swore it that day I'd never let that happen. So I went to fiberglass to make sure that it wouldn't be able to spear through it step number one and step number two in the unlikely event that water still did get in the aluminium makes sure that it can never rot so this is a consistent material so the weight's consistent the sizes are always consistent it can't rot it can't perish at all and in fact it won't move this material here will be around a lot longer than you and I will be but I can tell you now if it's timber it's going to rot it is only a question of when not if and that's why I go to aluminium. I've done this to save that little bit of extra weight. Over the course of the entire van, it's probably only saved 25 kilos. 25 kilos is nothing, right? Well, 25 kilos is a bloody lot if it's 25 kilos or 25 litres of water when you need it. You didn't have the ability to carry it because the van was too heavy, as opposed to one that simply isn't too heavy because I went to the trouble of drilling this all out in the first place. Look, this is great. I've got Clint over here right now. You see what he's doing, he's actually screwing the furniture in. Now, the furniture the other side, as he screws that in, it's pulling the furniture towards the wall. The industry standard is to run a staple gun and just go as they run the staples down. Staples will run a pin. If you grab the furniture inside, you can drag the furniture off the pin. If you try and drag the furniture in off from that now, there is no way you'll be able to pull it through. Now, it is true it makes it a little harder to repair, but it's also true it's ten times likely, less likely to need a repair in the first place for, for the reason we do this. So the advantage of this floor is in this insulation value. Heat rises and goes up. So by having an insulated floor, we've made the rest of the, uh, the insulation effective. If the floor isn't insulated, then the rest of the caravan really is all it's going to do is create a heat trap. The heat comes up through the floor, it's held in with the insulation from the walls and ceiling. We also insulate our windows by having double glazed windows mm. as well. Double glazed windows, insulated uh, floor, insulated walls, insulated ceilings. It's a fully insulated van that can be truly used in those terms. Mm. You'll notice also when we put our wiring in, our wiring's actually in the roof and cascades down the van. So the wiring doesn't run across. 
to cut the living daylights out of all the framing. Again, this is something you'll see if you have a look at a lot of timber frame vans where they chop the living daylights out of the framing just to run wires. By cascading it from the, the top, it also gives us the ability to capture the maximum amount of area that we can um, insulate. Now, in, our insulation is 25 mil thick, by the way, the same thickness as this. So when this goes on, we've got a nice smooth surface to be able to put our walls on. Mm -hmm. Now, again, something incredibly important that I want to tell you, we don't use the composite, or we do use composite panels if it's requested, we can do them. Our preference, however, is for the way we produce this. One of the reasons is because we can screw the furniture in place. The other reason is that by doing it this way, we can truly come up with a composite experience with all the advantages and no disadvantages. So, this is hard glued to the aluminium frame. The fiberglass, however, when it's attached, is actually used with a flexible adhesive. The reason is, Aluminium expands and contracts at a different way to fibreglass, at a different rate. So if this is solidly attached to the fibreglass, there's no room for the movement, eventually it's going to delaminate. So if you build a wall with an aluminium frame inside the fibreglass panel, delamination is going to happen. It's just a question of when, not if. A big feature on our van is that we make these panels. It takes a lot more time, but we're not doing it because we want to take longer and spend more money, we're doing it because it's the best way to build a caravan. Look, people that buy Sunland caravans do so because they've done their research. They're intelligent people, they, they know what to look for, they're not just looking at some pretty van sitting out there, they'll come in and do it. Um, we've got an incredible array of high intelligent people that, that, that have come in and said, look, we think you should do this or we think you should do that. And if there's value in what they're saying, we'll listen to it and we'll do it. We'll always listen to what they've got to say and provide them with what it is that they want. I can't emphasise enough on just how strong this fibreglass is. There's fibreglass and there's fibreglass. You can get normal thin glass which will run through and wave all over the place. This particular glass is laid up in a mould, so it's a fibreglass with a four and a half mil thick resin core. I've seen people bang their caravans and I don't care how hard you hit that, the only thing you're going to hurt is yourself. Mm. You're never going to hurt the caravan. Hail proof, almost bulletproof. We proved that with a shotgun recently. Here's the other thing that I really want to show off because I love this feature. We've used areas that would otherwise probably be wasted in a caravan to fit all our electronics and our plumbing and so forth, giving it access through a rear boot. This particular unit here has got a massive 3000 watt inverter, two 200 um, amp hour lithium batteries, run in series so it's a 24 volt system it is then by use of a dc dc inverter goes from 12 uh, 24 back to 12 to run uh, 12 inside the van itself we've got here um, all the plumbing and stuff at the back but with easy access you'll see those plates that i showed you earlier on the cnc machine that get fitted down here so that the um, pipes don't move the silicon and allow ingress you'll see this one here which is the finished job where you can see that they're screwed down you can see all the silicon around there in this area we've been able to fit water pumps um, a heater and your hot water service all in the one area now this simply means if you do have any kind of issues be it electrical or plumbing it's as simple as opening up this rear hatch they're not taking up space inside the caravan they're not utilizing the space for you to put your things it's all tucked away if you do want to do upgrades, if you want to do anything to this van later down the track, by simply opening this door you get easy access. And we've made it with that rear bumper bar that simply folds down. So when you're ready, you just swing this back up into place and away you go. Really easy, innovative, thoughtful. Look, you're not going to see that on any other caravan. It's another unique part of the Sunland experience. Look, we all love what we do. We're very passionate here at Sunland about every part of what we do. We would love you to come down, have a factory tour, have a look at things that we've been talking about today, and heaps more. Look, just come down and talk to us. You'll enjoy the experience.